Prosecco doesn't count as wine, huh? I mean, it's wine, yeah. Okay. So, you know, people do Prosecco. <laughs> What's good, y'all? Welcome to How's Your Wine. It's episode 16, and I'm here with one of my best friends in the game, uh, Nicholas Russo. If you are on Instagram or even TikTok, you've seen him, uh, aka The Vanilla Show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Tell them tell more about yourself. The floor is yours. Oh, uh, well, welcome to the show, of course. And uh, my name is Nicholas Russo. I used to live in Dallas. I used to really live in Grand Prairie and Dallas with Nelson. That was my former roommate. We had great times together. Um, then I moved out to the middle of Europe in the Czech Republic to basically start a new life or try something new. So then I'm, I've been out here and just reinventing and rebranding myself. And now I found some success. So here we are. So we'll get to the rebranding later on, but talk about, you know, Coming from Dallas, where you know you have so many different cultures, to Prague, where it's like you know heavy European. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, uh, that was definitely a change for me because really, having grown up in Oak Cliff, Grand Prairie, and Dallas, uh, you can easily find yourself as like a white person could easily be the minority in in any of those places, uh, and then you come to Prague or Central Europe, and it's like. 99.9 percent .9 white so like it's just a different look and and you're like okay and like uh in dallas if you see people with dreads it's like yeah okay like people have dreads but in here you you will see people with dreads too but none of them are black it's like all white so there's like lots of little cultural differences and stuff like that but prague is a capital city and it's international so so it's it's still like it's still a metropolitan zone with lots of international, you know, different. If you're gonna find different ethnicities and different flavors here, then it's 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 in the capital. How long you been there? I think I know the answer, but for the people that you know, obviously don't know how long you've been over there. How long has it been? I've been here five years, and I have not been back to America since. So I don't know what y'all are doing over there. <laughs> Man, it's it's definitely different since you left here. I think 2018. You know, completely different. You know, COVID wasn't even a thing back then. I don't think I was drinking wine like that back then. Um, for you, how have you grown within the last five years, you know, from your journey? Uh, I think, man, when I was in Dallas, I think I was a little bit lost. You know, like, there's just so many people and America has so many people and it's just oversaturated. Yeah, that's what I felt like. It was oversaturated with like, you know, if you want to do fitness, everybody doing fitness or like, if you want, you know, so like... I didn't know where to stand out or what my career path should be. So I was a little bit lost. And then I came to Europe and I kind of was like, yeah, I'm going to be me. I think if I be me here, people will enjoy it. Plus I'm American here. So they're like, oh, he's, the, he's, you know, I have like a little extra X factor. So, so yeah, um, just learning, definitely obviously maturing and being more responsible and viewing the world differently than I did when I was five years ago. And just, uh, you know, I got uh, married and engaged and I have a kid on the way. So hey. you really have to change like your ment mentality on, on, I just view myself in a different chapter in life. Like I'm not, there's no reason to go to the club and, and chase girls anymore. <laughs> it's, that chapter is over, you know, you got to focus on other stuff. So that's actually something I found really interesting is that on my Instagram, I mean, like you can't post thirst traps anymore. There's no purpose for them. So you had to like rebrand, like what were you doing on Instagram? You can't just post dope photos. Like they have to, they have to mean something more now. So yeah. I think in Europe, I really was searching for like, who, who are you? And what can you bring to people other than like, Oh, you, you think you took a, sexy selfie like you you need more than that so that's kind of what i've been working on here when was when did you figure out that point in your like chapter like when you figured you know i can't just be you know thirst thirst trap king right or whatever you know the vanilla show yeah in the united states when did you learn like okay i gotta really switch it up um i think that when you're when you're gonna be 
really committed to somebody, then you you just change your behavior, you just change your actions. Like you just tell yourself, well, I'm not trying to attract anybody else's attention. So what I post will change. So it just comes down to commitment and whether or not like you really want to pursue this person or that person. And then that, that changes how you play the game. So. All right. So now you talk about social media and the things that you post. I know your content has changed so much over the last five years, but I felt like you always had like that social media skill set. Um, talk about how your social media journey has grown. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was in college, I just knew I wanted to be famous. So that's all I focused <laughs> on. But that's not a plan like that. that there was no. So I created like my own YouTube show with musicians and I tried to do like funny things. And like, I, I've been creating content back yeah. when like, you know, Jenna Marbles was, you know, like that era of YouTube, like way back then. And, uh, you know, Google was actually cutting me a check for that back then for, for like two years. And then I just couldn't keep up with the technology in the real world. And I had to get a real job after college. So I kind of just stopped making I tried every now and then to do a show or to like make content. And then I guess I just patiently waited for maybe 10 years, maybe, maybe something like that. And, uh, TikTok popped up and I was like, I'm not going to go dancing on the internet. That's not, I'm too old for that. So, but then it changed and it was more just like, yeah, you can just teach on there. You can just create some content. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. So then. I, I found out here that people really like to hear like an American speak because here they speak Czech. So that was kind of a, a bonus for me, not a bonus, but a, a advantage I had. So I just was using that. And then slowly over time, I started to create different content like sports content, fitness content. And then I learned more and more. I used to make travel content. I would go to Greece and like try and make a YouTube like great but now it's becoming really, really efficient and really, really like, okay, this is the algorithm or like I'm learning how to create really good stuff that half a million people view or like it's really taken off. So that's been the journey from, from trying to figure out YouTube with like a digital camera, you know, <laughs> like the big ones to like this iPhone does everything I need to create a whole, whole life. So. So you got, I know your TikTok following is probably crazy and your IG following is growing every day. Like talk about, you know, some of the most memorable posts that you have and like why those stick out to you. Yeah. Um, I think on TikTok I have over a hundred thousand, but all of that took years of working and grinding and like, what do people want to see? What's, what's nonsense. So, um, I think I have close to 40,000 on Instagram. And, but you, you, it's really about adapting. I gotta, you gotta figure out because there was a point where Instagram was not pushing anybody's photos. Like if you post, I used to get a thousand likes on a photo. And then a year later I have more followers and I'm taking cooler pictures and there's no, and it's like half as many. So they switched over and they want you to make reels. So then when you started making reels and then it was just like, they're sharing it for you. So, so that's kind of how it evolved and changed what's the like biggest hurdle for you as far as creating content mm. well everybody here speaks a different language so i cannot i cannot just say something in english without putting subtitles for it in check so i'm kind of limited i can't just make a video i have to do a lot of editing and get the correct translation and even people that I want to work with, if they don't speak English, then I got to, it can be really awkward. Like it's just like a barrier. The language barrier is definitely something that, that is really hard, but I'm cracking the door on, on everything right now. So I'm getting in there. With this being a wine show, there's people that, you know, I follow that are, you know, travelers and people I'm sure that are overseas. Like, what would you recommend for them? Like, when they're going overseas and learning more about other cultures, when they're creating content, what should they be doing and what should they be looking out for? When it comes to wine? When it comes to creating content in like another country. Uh-huh. 
Uh, I think the rule is the same in every country. Uh, you cannot, you just cannot be ashamed to pull out your phone and do it. And that's my biggest fear is like, I would hate, I think it's so cringy for someone to see me in public. Like, Hey, look, check this out. Or da, 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 da. Cause I think how I would view that person, like, Oh no, no, no. That's really weird. But you just got to be like, yo, you want to be successful or not? Like, <laughs> it's not, it, it, it can't, that's the key. Go film something interesting. You know, edit it in a really nice, catchy way. Make yeah. something that's shareable. That's the most important thing. If people look at that video and they say, I identify with that, or like, oh, me too. Or it has to be a video that they would send to somebody else. We send videos to each other all the time. All the time. Yeah. So, like, just think about that. If I'm creating a video, what do other people want to see? That's kind of how I look at. Like for TikTok, I don't, I literally only post things that other people want to see. And on Instagram, I'm more like, yeah, if you don't like it, it's, it's, this is still me, you know, but, but if you want to make a video that's going to move on, it's got to be shareable and relatable. Those are the two keys. Major key alert. So with you going to Europe, you talked about how you wanted to be more like yourself over in Europe mm -hmm. and you find it challenging when you are creating content that you know people want to see certain things and you know that hey this might not be who i really am but i still got to put it out there yeah um it happens uh i think if you make something funny and good and original then that's that's the bomb that's what you want to do that's exactly what you want to do but sometimes companies for example will say they want you to film something like this or you have a friend who's like i have a great idea let's do this and you're like <laughs> like okay we can do it because it will ben I, I will benefit from it but it yeah. will be cringy or sometimes like stolen content they call it stolen content but everything is recycled on the internet so like the rare times where I copied somebody mm -hmm. and did it in check like I copied a popular American skit I did it in check which I feel like is cool and fair and people are like oh you 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 copy everything. These guys, they don't have anything original. I'm like, go check out the other 655 videos I did. Like, come on now. So, I don't know. That That's what's key is, is shareability and relatability. So. Facts, facts. Side note, I'm drinking coffee this morning because it's 8, 8 in the morning. And it's a wine show, so I can't really get my, my day started with, you know, red wine. It's not going. It's 4 a.m. over here. It's 4 p.m. over there. So that's almost be... happy, almost happy hour for y'all. Yeah, but I got practice at six. So, okay. So talk. Oh, speaking of practice, all right. So, uh, in your normal job, you are a teacher, mm -hmm. and then what else are you doing over there for people who aren't familiar with your game? Yeah, I, to be honest, I feel like I have three full time jobs. That's why I said I was happy the season was over because <laughs> I go to work as a regular teacher in a private international school. And uh, I'm teaching all kinds of subjects like geography and biology. And then when that's over, then you go home and you need to create some content or you got to edit some film or you have a meeting with a brand. They want to talk about some clothes or some food or something or whatever. And then usually five times a week, I'm at practice for the local club. So that's why I say I have like three full-time jobs. So, so yeah, but um, uh, I came here and... Uh, I found out that like the, the basketball level here was not so high. So I started playing and I was like, you know what? I'm kind of good, even though I don't have like the experience because uh, I played American football instead of basketball in high school. So I found out like, man, I kind of have some some skill here. So then I started working my way up and here they have like a farm system. So like the local club in the city could be in like the third league. And if you win your league, you could play in the pros if you want to. So everything is connected. And I think that's super cool. It would be like if the Lakers had like a Laker B team or a Laker C team or a Lakers D team. And, you know, you could you could play in the pros if you if your team is good enough. So so I'm I'm just playing around in that league and recording content and having fun. It's like a, it's like my hobby. If you like wine, I like basketball. Like Well, we both like basketball, but yeah. it's like a hobby and I'm crazy about it. I want to. I want to learn. I'm 32, but I want to learn like I'm 15, you know? Man, I think that's so real because I respect, like, just the mindset. That, I've always respected the mindset and mentality that you had because you've always been, like, 
somebody who's always wanted to learn while you're teaching other people, you know, about your, your progress. Right. And so just to see like another dude, like keep going and keep going, no matter how old you are, like you just, you feel like you don't have like, uh, you don't have any boundaries when it comes to like, I guess ceiling, roof, whatever, floor mm -hmm. ceiling. Um, you don't have any, any anybody stopping you, you know? Yeah, well, I also have to tell myself, like I heard somebody say like, you know, oh, fake it till you make it. Or like, you just gotta pretend, like you can't wait until you're the famous star to be acting, to do famous star stuff. You have to like, believe that's where you're going. So therefore you should act like this is who you are, you know? If I walk into a room with a meeting with people, then I should, I should, if this is who I want to be, then I should be that person, you know? So for a long time, I had to, I had to like convince myself like, no, this is who you're going to be. So, so you need to, you need to act like it. So I cannot, I cannot listen to limits or negativity or um, doubt, you know, I just, that's why I feel like I came here to this new country and I just threw all that away. I was just like. Whatever I want to be, I'm gonna go try to be. And none of these people know me, so it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna, just gonna try it. So I think that's what really helped is like the fresh start. Okay, so for somebody who is like me, I came over to Prague last year. You know, saw the beautiful wedding with you and Clara. You know, what I'm saying gorgeous environment. Um, what are some of like the big takeaways with? an American going to Prague and maybe someone from Prague going to America, like what would you tell them like to look out for? Mm, be more specific. Like you mean in, you mean like, um, what, what are some of the key differences for like someone from America going to Prague and vice versa? I think like when I, we were in downtown Dallas, we had an apartment in downtown Dallas. So that was like home of, that's like businessman center. So, <laughs> You know, everybody was hustling and everybody was selling everything. And, you know, that's where we get our mentality from, our hustler's mindset from. But when I came here to Europe, everybody was cool with just being chill. Like, yeah, I work as a part-time taxi guy and yeah, that's it. And I was like, like, don't you, don't you need like three, three more jobs to, to make this money and, you know, become a millionaire. And they're, you just, you just find that here they're, they're valuing maybe I don't need money. I need time to take my kids to the park or I don't need to be rich. I need like basic healthcare or free university or weekend, you know, weekends always off or like the amount of hours I was working at South Grand Prairie high school as a teacher <laughs> compared to the amount of hours <laughs> that I work here as still full-time job, but it's like, it's just less demanding. Everybody's, more chill and I don't know it's just a, I always tell people it's a slower pace of lifestyle here for sure so no one is trying to sell you stuff and you, like I said my mailbox is almost empty half the time <laughs> in America you have like a trillion advertisements or credit yeah. card companies so and they, they don't even have advertisements here for um for pills and stuff that doesn't exist there's no like Viagra it's yeah <laughs> <laughs> symptoms include like those commercials don't even exist so it's 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 a lot of things that you see like oh they don't even do that here. so do you feel like america is more like a fear like they're selling on fear i feel like america is a is a business machine where the like if you want to be rich like wolf of wall street type stuff if you want to you know you can have like three cars and a big house and some land you can do that in Texas. You can do that if that's your goal. But I feel like here in the Czech Republic, it's more like we value family and and enjoying your life more than more than money. That's what I feel like. Speaking of family, you talked about earlier you about to have a kid. You know, what I'm saying congratulations. Very proud of you. Uh, so, so watching him. Yeah. Watching you, watching you grow from like you know us being, you know, at the clubs, I guess in Dallas, to like now being this basically dad, family man. What's that been like? You know, especially with like uh, your wife now and and all of that. 
Mm, like I said, it's it's like a different chapter, and I had to physically tell myself you you are going in a different lane now. So you're not posting thirst traps anymore. You're not looking for attention from other people anymore. So where does all that energy go now? You know. So now it's like okay. Now we say content creation, or like now we say building connections, or now we're looking. In, you just have to channel that energy in a different direction. So that's what I that's what I think about. You know, just that you're in a different role and a different chapter. So you have to you have to move differently and think and put your energy in a different lane. And I think if anyone who's following him on IG or TikTok, you've seen them, you know, with the duets. Uh, explain like how you guys have really worked on your relationship by collab collaborating on all the content. Yeah, um, it's just been a long journey, and we're just ex experimenting on what people like. And I don't know here that here we probably hit at a time when there was no. There was no couple con. There was no couple goals content, you know. So I think I brought a lot of American flavor over here, and of course my wife is like the ultimate editor. Like she can create. She's the ultimate creator. She can edit anything. She has. She's an artist. Like so, a lot of credit goes to her. But um, we just use everyday situations to to be like, oh, we should film this, or like, like haha, we share a laugh, and then we go, let's film it. Let's let's, let's recreate it. <laughs> And people love it, and people love yeah. it. So we try to, we try to to make original stuff, but there's like a trillion couples in the world, or have been. So, er, it not, you know, you can't. Everybody's done something before, but, but yeah, we we are working together twenty four seven. So and so far it hasn't been the issue. Or if we're upset with each other, we just have separate rooms. So we just take some time off and come back to it. Yeah. So it's much more much more it's much easier than people think but we are working together 24 7 we're editing each other's videos and filming for each other and so i would actually like to hire a cameraman because you know like if you're arguing with your wife you, you it's like okay now do now film this for me <laughs> you know shit. <laughs> it's like i need something from you but y'all are arguing so then you you're like Ugh. So maybe we just get it. We just hire somebody to, to neutral to do it. But so far, it's been great. I feel like, man, I'm burnt out. I need like I need a week or two off. Cause you you talked about like practice seasons coming to an end. Like, how do you balance all that mentally? Mm, I think right now that's part of the new journey. That's part of the new journey. How do you manage that? Because the kid's not even here yet. So <laughs> I hate for people to tell me it's going to get a lot worse, but like, for example, yesterday I went to work and we don't have, we, I, I can't drive. So I'm walking to the bus station. Then I, the bus takes me and I need to walk to work. So I get to work and then I'm working from seven, eight in the morning to three thirty. And then when you finish that, I had two videos to edit and I had two events I was supposed to go to like, uh, and something to post. So to me, it just looked like never ending work. So sometimes it, that's a struggle for sure. That's, that's the struggle. How do you, how do you relax? How do you, how do you, where's the vacation? Where's the break? You know? So, but I, I just believe we're building something so successful right now that in the future we will profit from the, the work we did now, the, the, the stress of now. Facts, facts. All right. How would you describe the wine culture in Czech Republic and in Prague? Um, Czech Republic is a beer drinking country. They have to, they drink the most beer in the world. I don't care what Germany has to say. Um, but they have a part of the country, a region of the country called Moravia. It's more like rural, more like country, countryside. So they have Moravian wine. Moravian, Moravian wine, and so that stuff comes to the city, and people people love wine. Or he, here, even for Christmas, they have hot wine. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but they have hot wine here. Explain, cool. explain hot wine. Well, in your best wine. in your best terms. Uh, like if okay, you know, you can picture a Christmas market, like 
there's a bunch of little shops and they want to sell their things and there's Christmas lights and decorations and it's snowing and it's beautiful and you're freezing and you want something to drink. So they have mold wine or, or hot wine and you go and you, you drink it and uh, it just tastes like hot wine. But they, they, sometimes they have honey in it. Sometimes they have um, different flavors, obviously, but that's like a that's like a thing here for sure. So wine culture is definitely popular. It's there. Yeah. All right. What's your go to wine? Like your favorite wine? You know the answer to this question. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I may know the answer, but for the people that are listening, your people are not going to like my answer, sir, because I don't drink wine. You know that. I know. What 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 made you not I, drink? I wine? have so many bottles of wine. People give me bottles of wine for like as a gift, yeah. and for them, it feels like I'm giving I'm giving him something valuable. Some some, and I'm like. I, I'm taking it and I'm like I'm not I'm never gonna drink this <laughs> it, it could be like um, and you know my dad sells wine for a living you should get you should talk to him actually follow up interview he could tell you more about wine than than anybody you've ever talked to that's all he does is wine 40 50 years actually in the wine business but me I'm not a fan of the way it tastes but um, I've tried it before uh, Prosecco doesn't count as wine huh it does I mean it's wine yeah okay so you know people do prosecco and it's time <laughs> to celebrate but i'm not going to the fridge to to grab some wine uh, i know people love it who uh stoudemire was bathing in wine i heard or something like that yeah it's a, so, it's a new it's a new wave in uh uh basketball you know basketball players you know a lot of players around the league are drinking it so that might be something you have to get into, man, to extend your career as a hooper. CJ McCollum has his own wine, I think, yep. or Iguodala too, or something like that. Yep. What's up with the Mavs, man? Man, I'm glad we set, set some time to talk about Dallas sports. So uh, the Mavs are in a, a world of hurt. We'll see what happens with Kyrie. Hope he, hopefully he stays. But, um, you know, Luca, great year last year. Just didn't, didn't pan out for the squad. Didn't Does pan Kyrie out come back? I hope so, man. I, I need something to look forward to because if Kyrie doesn't come back, then the team, you know, together is looking a little shaky. You got Christian Wood, Luca, and, and and Kyrie. So my so so what I'm looking for is two elite defenders. <laughs> no, above two above average defenders. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for in the starting lineup. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I don't even know if Christian Wood's coming back because he's a free agent. So like we could we could potentially lose Kyrie and Christian Wood. Um. It's not good. It's not good. And the uh, stars are in the playoffs. Stars in the playoffs. I went to the game on Tuesday. Uh, we're in the, it's the first round playing uh, Minnesota. And if they win, yeah, that, do, do we have a good team or, or... got a squad? We got a squad. Hmm. We got a squad. We uh, hopefully we can go pretty far. We went to the Stanley Cup in 2020. Um, so hopefully we can get back and actually have some games in the American Airlines Center. So we'll see, man. And the Rangers? The Rangers are, are actually better than they've been in the past, man. This the last fifteen years it feels like it's been, you know, super high World Series L's, but we went there and then like the last six, seven years it's been really garbage, but Yeah. You know, I like the new better. uniforms they popped out. The baby blue joints? Mm, or no, the, the red and the red and black ones. The red oh the with the black pants. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. They are right. they look alternative pretty. black <laughs> they are. Uh, but back to the wine. Yeah. You got have, you. Certain wines go with certain foods. Like what? 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 Just give me the basics. Like I'm a three year old. <laughs> well, three year olds don't drink wine, but like a you know eighteen year old. <laughs> Not even eighteen year olds. Maybe in oh, Czech in, in Europe. You can't. <laughs> yeah. Um. Really, honestly, it's, it's not a a specific science for pairing wine i always tell people just try what you what you like uh i like to pair like i mean obviously on my feed like i'll pair whatever like if i pair if i have a spicy food i want to be able to have something that's not as spicy to balance it out uh if i have a sweet dish then i probably want a sweet wine so that they complement each other they go hand in hand but it really depends on like what the the vibe is the experience so so let me give you three meats Pause. And you and you and you got to give me one wine that goes with it. Okay. So let's just say salmon. 
uh, you can pick any wine to go with that salmon. What 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 are you doing with that? Probably leaning towards a white wine. I'll probably go Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, fresher, and, and then the fish is hopefully fresh as well. So I want that to go hand in hand. And chicken. Chicken. Oh, um. Chicken is pretty flexible. Like I probably you can also go Pinot Grigio. You can go really any white wine. It depends on like what chicken or what dish you're serving with the chicken. Uh, you can go Sauvignon Blanc. You know, really, again, I'm explaining it to a three-year-old or 18-year-old, you know. So, Me. Yeah, you. Um, uh, uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, it really depends on chicken and then what my side is. Like if I have a pasta with like red sauce and chicken, then I'm going to go maybe with um, a lighter red wine, like a Pinot Noir, something mm. like that. But it's more and the last, the last one is the, the best steak, the best, fanciest, nicest Kobe steak you got. What 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 should I be pairing with that? I mean, you know, in Texas, like when they say cab is king, so like uh, a cab is what I'm rocking with for sure, like a really – bold red uh full body red that's what i'm pairing with a, a nice cabernet cabernet sauvignon yes oh, okay. yes sorry for the for the listeners i'm, out there. I'm, I'm a three-year-old so cab you, yeah. you, you're using the wine lingo <laughs> yeah but that's what i'm that's what i'm pairing with with a nice red juicy steak that's that's what i would lean towards so what about the top three countries when it comes to wine for you I'm looking to travel more. So are you asking me like the top three countries that produce wine, or like the top three countries that like, I want to go to and visit? No, no, no. Just the wines that you have tasted in your life. Like best wine comes from what three countries in your opinion? <sighs> Ooh, uh, man, that's tough. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> put me on the spot. I would say Burgundy's. Like red burgundies, Bourgogne's from France. Because um, I just hear Chile, Chile and Argentina and Australia, they also have wine or Italians. There, I mean, every, so many countries make wine. You know, the, the climates are suitable for wine. Uh, it kind of depends on what you are looking for. Um, We're talking about your favorite wine countries. My favorite wine countries, yeah. France is um, one. France is one. Um, I would go, damn, I would go Spain. Is it that like, hard? Yeah, I would go Spain. I like reds from Spain. Um, and if I'm going white wine, I prefer like Australia. You know, you know, next time you come over here, if you don't like have bubble guts or whatever to pop <laughs> at the airport, uh, you know, literally we can just go to, we can literally go to Rome. We can literally go to Italy, Spain, and Paris, and then you go home from Paris. I'll have to take I'll have to take up on that offer. Hopefully, uh, I don't have bubble guts, severe bubble guts, on uh, on my trip to Prague. But I would say that's more altitude sickness, not bubble guts. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm I'm just saying it's very easy to travel around Europe. You should just come, break off a week or two, and just go check out these different um, wine regions. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna add it to the rotation, bro, for sure. But uh, I know you got the rest of your happy hour and your Friday to enjoy, so I'm going to let you uh, sign off. What uh, would you want to say to people who are going to follow you after this? Like, What should they be looking out for from you next? If you follow me on TikTok, you, can, you, can, you will find some, some funny, entertaining videos. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, then you're looking more at like my day-to-day -day life. And I, I post way more cool, cool stuff on Instagram. Like what's it like inside basketball? Lately, I've been partnering with pro basketball teams and going on the bench on the pro. <laughs> like I, I'm now doing all kinds of content where it's like, uh, I'm really just stepping into the big leagues with blue check companies and, and blue check sports teams. Like real authentic blue checks or not like people that just bought their blue checks? Like nah, you can only buy blue checks on Twitter, I heard, from for $8. Okay. Since, well, la last time I was in America, Elon Musk did not own Twitter, but things have changed, you see, so. Yeah. So, no, no, we're talking about real deal, Instagram, blue checks, so. You know what's funny? The one story I've been following in America is uh, Deion Sanders went to Colorado. Yeah. I'm excited to see that season.
it's gonna be different, man. Uh, just the energy, obviously coming from sweat the swag, you know, all black conference to Colorado, yeah. which is uh, you know, traditionally not, not a not black school. Black. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that all changes because even like the transfer portal, like a lot of his players are, or a lot of the players that were at Colorado are leaving. You know, the season's about to start in like you know three four months, so you know who's you gonna be there on Instagram. Uh, I probably don't follow Deion Sanders on Instagram. I like to follow people that I can like maintain my lifestyle and I can't maintain that lifestyle. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, because the way he does his social media, I will start to do it. Um, uh, when I finished, when I finished teaching okay. every day, he's posting just something from his world and you know, he's inter he's a, he's an entertaining guy. So yeah. I, I actually look at his page for like inspiration on how, on what to, what to film for people and like how to show people stuff. Also like the rock, you know? He's super active on Inst on Instagram. He's posting, you know, all the time, everywhere. Little videos, big videos, motivational videos. Right. So I've been I've been watching and learning and trying to absorb so that I can, and maybe in a couple of years, be big, 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 big time. So. Hey man, I'm always gonna be rooting for you for sure. Trying to see where you go. Uh, hopefully we can link up in Europe soon. Definitely want to see see the little the little one, the yep. fam, and all that. So I'm excited for you, bro. Yeah, thank you for having me on here and talking about these wines. Sorry, I'm not a, a, a wine connoisseur. I'm a, a I'm a water drinker. So, hey, but I mean, uh, you know, I go to these fancy restaurants and they we they're talking they're ordering wine. So I need you to. I got you. I'm gonna be like, yeah, Nelson told me one time I need a, a Cat Cavus King. So let's go. <laughs> with this. Hey let's man, go. just keep following. I got you. Don't worry, bro. You keep up the good work, man. Thanks, man. All right, bro. Take care. Enjoy your Friday. And uh, that's it for How's It Wine this episode. Again, you can follow Nick at The Vanilla Show on TikTok, on Instagram. And uh, you can follow me at How's Your Wine on YouTube and IG. All right. Peace. Peace, bro.